All right, I'm just going to go over a few homework questions here from uh, sections 1.2 and 1.3. Um, the most asked about questions, so I thought oh, I'll just make a little video for it. Um, the first one is this geocaching picture, uh, picture on page 33 from section 1.2. And the question states that the distance from the captain to the cache is 500 yards. And you'll need that information um, in order to figure out what your scale is. And it says the team must cross the river. So instead of going straight across, they have to travel this path. They've got to go from dot to dot to dot to dot to dot. Um, the first thing it wants you to do is estimate the distance that the team travels from the captain's position to the cast to the cache. That means that you have to estimate the distance that they're going to go around. It's just an estimation too, right? We know that from the captain to the cache is uh, 500 yards. I measured with a ruler. Now I didn't measure in centimeters, I measured in inches because inches are related to yards. So you want to keep the units so that's very, very easy to convert. Um, <clears throat> so if I know that that's two and a half inches, I could even use a referent, uh, say like my thumb, and I could figure out how many thumb um, um, widths this is. And then I could use my thumb widths all the way around. It ends up being around double. Um, but your estimate could be anything. Maybe you maybe you estimated 1,500 yards, right? Maybe you estimated 1,000 yards. Um, whatever your estimate is, it's based on that distance, and you can kind of use a referent or just based on the, the inch. But you're not measuring anything. It's just an estimation, right? So you're not actually measuring with a ruler yet. <clears throat> and you can justify your answer by saying um, how you did it. The global positioning system basically says that uh, you can measure the distance between the dots. And what you want to do is you first of all need a scale. So before before you can start measuring, it's best to use your scale here. So I know that two and a half inches is equivalent to 500 yards. Now I can reduce this by dividing each side by two and a half. The reason I would do that is because when I divide by two and a half, I get a unit measurement. So 500 divided by 2.5 will give me 200. So I get one on this side, and I get 200 on this side. That makes it easy to measure. That means when I'm starting to measure all these little distances between the dots, and then I add all those up, so I measure in inches all the way for every dot, and I add this one up to this part, to this part, to this part over here, to this part here. Add all those up, and then you'll have a distance in inches, and then you can use your uh, your scale to figure out the act of the distance. Now that would kind of be an estimated distance. The actual distance, what it says, it says, how would that compare to the actual distance? Well, the actual distance is like the little dotted line, and because it's kind of curved and stuff, and the GPS just measures straight distance, the curves are going to add a little bit extra to it. So the actual distance they traveled might be a little bit more just because of the curved lines. Okay, that's that one. Uh, for section 1.3, this one, again, you have to measure with a ruler. So for the first one, if the closet is square, estimate the length of one of its sides. So again, it's just an estimation, right? You look at the distance down here, you think it's 2.6, it's a little bit less than 2.6. So let's say the length of one of its sides is, I don't know, 2 or 1 and at 0.8 or something, whatever you want to uh, estimate. Determining the scale of the floor plan, what you have to do is you have to measure with a ruler in your textbook, and you have to measure one of the lengths of the sides. You could measure the whole length, or you could measure just a width, you could measure width over here. Um, <clears throat> I chose to measure this one here, so 4.3 meters, and I measured it to be about 2.9 centimeters. Notice this time I'm using centimeters because uh, the actual distance is in meters, so we keep the units easy to compare. So that's my ratio. I have 2.9 centimeters to 4.3 meters. Now this time it actually wants us to determine the scale um, and typically the back of the book has everything in the same units. So I would convert this to centimeters by multiplying by 100 first of all. So I'd have 2.9 to 430 and these are both in centimeters. Then probably again what I would do is I would divide each side by 2.9 so I have 430 divided by 2.9, which is 148.28. So I get 1, because I divided it by 2.9. And it was 
So 148.28 centimeters. That means for every one centimeter I measure on my diagram, it's going to equal approximately 148.28. It makes it easy, right? Because then I can measure any distance, and if it's if I measure and it happens to be two centimeters, then I just divide, multiply that two centimeters by 148. If it's 2.3 centimeters, I multiply 2.3 by 148.28. Same thing. So you you should be able to um, finish off all of these, especially part C where it says calculate the length. Now you can actually measure the length of the closet and with a ruler, and you can figure out semi-accurately. Again, it's going to be different than the back of the book by a little bit, uh, but you can figure it out um, close, right? Very close. And then what are the dimensions of the bedroom in imperial units? You look at the bedroom, um, and you convert those to imperial units, so that one shouldn't be too bad. But this should help you with the first few. So hopefully that gives you a hand. Um, yeah, thanks.